too many times women sort of want to throw out their negative emotions and I'm going to be authentic. When I'm saying be authentic, I'm saying being authentic about your loving side, your authentic self. You know, what you think, what you feel, what you like, what you want, what you don't like, what you do want, whatever. But don't throw negative emotions out there. If you have negative emotions about something, pull back until you create a safety where he can really see the best of you before he sees negative parts of you. You know, it's just like a job interview in a sense. Whereas, you know, what they say in a job interview, what's your greatest weakness? Right. <laughs> of course, the, the standard answer to that is, well, I, 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 I work too hard. <laughs> I think all the interviewers know that one now, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I put in too many hours, you know, and whatever. <laughs> That's my weakness. I don't, I don't take enough time for myself, you know. Just, responsible. <laughs> you you, you want to present yourself in a positive context. You dress up a little bit, but not too much. Don't try to impress too much. Just don't, don't test. Sometimes people want to throw things out to test that that person can take all of me. Other people want to hide parts of themselves to win the love. And where I am is right in the middle. It's the gray zone, black or white, right in the middle is authenticity. It's sharing who you are, but appropriately at the different stages of a relationship, as opposed to first you want to bond with the best of someone then you start to take in the challenges that exist in the relationship. So you do make it easier in the beginning for people to see how wonderful you are. But inevitably, it, it does come up that when a woman feels safe, uh, then unresolved issues will come up. You will have certain ir irrational responses to things. You might get upset about things. This is later on. That's stage three when you get in a committed relationship. And I know many women listening are... are uh, uh, are just wanting to get to that place. But think about the relationships in your past where you were in a committed relationship. You have to understand how you contributed to the problems. Mm -hmm. uh, you see, the whole thing is to create a sense of safety and ease that I'm worthy and I can create the relationship of my dreams. And if you don't know how you contributed to the problems in your relationship, then you're always going to think it was just the wrong person and they're the wrong person and they're blaming them and they weren't right. and They did this and they did this. And that's all true. That's all true. But you need to see how you contributed to that. Okay. There's always two people that create a problem. And usually you get in a committed relationship. That's really where women step it up and they start giving more because that's where men step it up and give less, you know, to man, you know, I've done the dating thing. Now we're having sex and we're in a committed relationship. Okay. I don't have, I can let go. I don't have to I don't have to try, you know, it's like these couples that get married and they stop caring about their health and their wellness and their parents. Okay, we're married, so you don't have to worry about that stuff. I look great and for my age, 65 years old, I don't do it for my wife, I do it for myself, okay? It's just I want to live a long, healthy life, I want to feel sexy and I want to look in the mirror and feel sexy and that comes from health. It doesn't always look like looking like a model, I'm not some Superman looking, but for my body type, I'm healthy and that is sexy. And if you want a sexy life, you have to be able to look in the mirror and say, I'm sexy. But again, that's for men. And for women, they actually need help to feel sexy. Uh, but you need to start by feeling, you know, I can be sexy. But a man can take you to higher sexy. And that's by his doing things for you. And that's, once again, practicing the skills of getting him to do things for you. You know, he says, what do you want to do? You don't say, I don't know. What do you want to do? You say, well, here's a few things I'd like to do. It's not, he says, oh, what do you want to do? Most women go, I don't know. What do you want to do? Stop, stop. Then you're making him doing what he wants. Don't do what he wants. Even if, even in the beginning, he wants to do this. If you've got something you do better, tell him, well, we can do that, but I prefer this. This is what I really like. You know, if we go there, I'd feel really good. I'd love that. And then he kind of goes, well, I don't want to do that. But if it makes you happy, then I want to do it. Now, let's just stop right there. That is such a confusing concept, and it probably went over many women's head. He'll say, do you want to go, let's say that I would like to go have a picnic on the mountain. Okay, that's what I'd like to do. He said, yeah, we can have a picnic on the mountain, but though, you know, there's a racetrack, and I've really been waiting to go on the racetrack and to see this in my favorite person. And you, in and, and your mind, you're thinking, oh, okay, well, if we go to the picnic, he's going to resent going on the picnic because he really wants to go there. And you could even say, well, is there part of you that wants to go on the picnic? No, I'd rather not go on the picnic. I want to go on the racetrack. Now, is he a narcissist for that? No, you asked him, what do you want to do? Do you want to go on the picnic? No, I don't want to go on a picnic. 
uh, well, do you want to go on the racetrack? Yeah, I really want to do that. Okay, no, no, that's just what he wants. You want to go on the picnic. But in that situation, you imagine that if you insist on the picnic, that he's going to resent you for going on the picnic. And who wants to go on a picnic with somebody when they don't want to be on the picnic? That's what women are always saying. I don't want to go on a picnic if you don't want to go on the picnic. Right. I want to do what you want to do. No, you want him to want what you want. But men don't always want what you want. So how do you get what you want? Here's the secret. Understand men. This is such a breakthrough. I say to my wife, I don't want to go on the picnic, but if it's what you want and it makes you happy, then I want to go on the picnic. Now, that doesn't make sense to women. How could I suddenly change what I want? Because I don't want to go on the picnic. But if I know taking you on a picnic is going to make you happy, what I want more than the racetrack is to make you happy. Therefore, if taking you on the picnic makes you happy, I now want to take you to the picnic and I will enjoy the picnic as much as you enjoy it because it's making you happy. And that's not a facility that women have. Okay. It's like woman says, okay, I'll go to the racetrack for you. And oh, if it makes you happy, I'll do that. And you can do that for a little while. And then you're going to start resenting him and saying, you know, we only do what you want to do. We only do what you want to do. Well, men are fine doing what you want to do if it makes you happy. If it doesn't make you happy, then he's not going to be happy for sure. But that's, see, part of masculinity, part of testosterone is all about success. It's not about what do I get. It's not about me. It's about me being successful doing something for you. And that's what wins a man's heart. He bonds with you. The more he can do things to make you feel happy, and that means even giving up what he wants. He gives up what I want to do. I'm going to do what you want to do, which makes you appreciate him more. I mean, don't you appreciate somebody more if they really wanted to do something, but they love you so much, they're going to do what you want? That's real love. See, it's like I'm making you more important than me right now. But then the balance to that in a man's life is not what it is for a woman. See, a woman goes, I'll do something for you. It's not for me, but now you have to do something for me. And that's reciprocity. That's how women's hormones are associated. For a man, it's I'm going to do something for you, not for me. If it's successful, I am so happy and fulfilled. I'll do it again and again. And I'm also going to take time to do things for myself. I've earned the right to have my own things I want to do. So that's how we, you know, I go work for my family. I come home and I do what I want to do for me. And then I also do what I want for my wife and my children. It's all this balance of work, giving to my wife and children, and giving to me. And that balance has to be there for men, as, and, and that has to be there for women. And that's what Lauren teaches women, is how to balance the we time with the me time. Single women are all doing me time. Then they get in a relationship, they go into we time, and they give up me time. And now you become needy and clingy and too attached and dissatisfied. And whenever, ever, ever you're dissatisfied, a big part of that is you're too needy. That's what we started out with, is demanding more than what's available to you. A happy, fulfilled person is not ever demanding more than what they have. And at the same time, they want more. Now, that's a paradox for women. It's hard to understand. But we have to just say it again, which is, I'm happy with what I have and I want more. 